What's up, y'all? Welcome back. It's Mission Mike, the worst missionary of all time, and boy, oh boy, it's going down. It is about to go down. Jenna, prepare to get owned. I read you a little comment, and today we're doing a little video just for you in response to everything you had to say. So if you're new to the channel, welcome back. Welcome to the mission team. The whole goal of this, ironically, is that we gotta save the world. We're a team, we are, whether you believe it or not, this is a team and our goal is to save the world. All right, so I freaking love you guys, we get excited. You're gonna witness a little uh, little trash talking back and forth, all in fun, all out of love, but don't dish it if you can't take it, okay? So there's my disclaimer. So today, I'm gonna be reading y'all this comment. We're just jumping straight in. This is from Jenna, because I posted a video about why Christianity is declining. If you want some context, go ahead, jump in, read it. And here we go. All right, <clears throat> so first off, the whole video is about how everybody's leaving the church, what's happening, etc. So she replies, Yes, four people going out the door for everyone to come in. And it can't check out fast enough. And it can't check out Nessia much? Okay, it's a little Spanish for you, all right? Uh, Google that. So anyways, first I agree with that. I do agree with, that's the whole point of the comment. Like, that's literally what I was saying. Everyone's leaving. So we actually agree on this point. And let me admit that during my tenure as a Christian, uh-oh, here it comes. I was a missions leader in my church and also did jail ministry. So I'm not talking out of my patoot. Good word usage. Okay, I like the patoot one. But, uh-oh, I know you. <laughs> I know you. I know you. I've met you and countless people like you. You're the seed Jesus warned about who fell and didn't take root. What was it on the rocks or birds come away or grows up in the thorns, gets choked by this worries of this life. You're the seed that didn't multiply. You weren't really a Christian. Hate to break it to you. Some departed from us because they were never with us. Now, next up, I ha you know what? I already know. I, I know that you are exactly who I was talking about in that video. Like, I already know this. Okay, but we're going to continue. Your comments about reading the Bible are laughable because only one in nine Christians self-reports to have read it cover to cover at least once. So that number is overestimated, I'm sure. That's 11% of people in the pews. I, I love the caps lock, in the pews. Okay, this one's confusing because I don't know if you're actually listening or if you like maybe misunderstood what I was saying. Because what I was saying is like, laugh, like what are you talking, one in nine? My statistics that I gave from my own experiences were way worse than that. I was saying it's like, I'm talking one in a hundred. I'm talking, it's not 11% of the people. I've talked to countless believers, asked everybody who's actually read the Bible. Maybe that means they're reading it, but you said read cover to cover. That many people, there is no way that many Christians have read the Bible. There's no way. It's impossible or Christianity wouldn't be dying, period. We wouldn't all be arguing, we wouldn't be bickering, there wouldn't be so many divisions, so many churches not in harmony, so that's nonsense. So I think, I maybe you're like patting yourself on the back, being like, only one in nine. Uh, no, it's way worse than that. It's probably like one in a hundred. That's my theory, maybe even worse than that. While, they're, while you're there having your mind blown, very pridefully, I might add, the thing is this. <laughs> Lady, that ain't pride, that's passion, okay? That's passion. Uh, the thing is this, once people start actually digging into what the Bible actually says, they more often than not end up leaving. It's not a surprise that atheists can outperform Christians all day long, even a very basic on even a very basic Bible facts quiz. Sorry, I'll get a little bit of a lisp or whatever. And so, okay. The irony of what you're actually saying completely confirms what I said in the video. You are completely supporting everything. The problem with Christians is they don't read the Bible because once you do, it puts you to such a high standard and causes you to give, like completely change your life. Everything that you thought you wanted, all your hopes and your dreams, everything has to make this, you come up to a decision, a fork in the road, and you gotta decide to stay on the path that you're on or we are veering to the new path of Christianity, which is a life of self-sacrifice, loss, hardship. Most Christians get sold on the life's gonna get better. But scripture tells you it's gonna get way worse, okay? So 
most of the people who start reading it, exactly what you're saying, it's like they can't hack it. They couldn't hang. It's like someone who almost joins the military and doesn't get through boot camp. But the ones who get on the other side, like achieve something incredible, those who don't make it through, dishonorably discharge. So that's you right now, Jenna. <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time. I hope you can sense the fun in this. All right. It's like half truth, like half, like dishing back your way, but at the same time, I'm, I'm sure you're a cool cat. All right, next up, it's not a surprise, blah, blah, blah. Okay, once you start really studying it out, once you start digging for the truth, all right, amen to that, you can learn that the Bible has very little. No, it's the opposite. Once you start reading it, you realize you have very little. That's, that's the hard part, that's the humility, all of a sudden, I already know you, Jenna, like I know you. I'm sure you probably think the same thing about me. I mean, clearly, inferring by your comments, you, you're you making assumptions about me. So, so here you go, Frisbee's coming back your way. Scripture teaches you, you have very little. I'll bet money, you, like many other people, probably myself included, you wanna be the hero in the movie of Jenna. You wanna be the star, the center of it. You wanted to know that you saved the day in reality exactly what it tells us is is that we have very little we see how far we are from the standards set for us and it convicts you of who you are you know all right when i first started reading scripture when i first started reading it i was arrogant when i read it oh my gosh like pre you don't even want to know what i was like pre-jesus i was awful just douchebag of the year and then as i started reading it I still had the arrogance to think that in every story I read, I would have been the hero. I would have, I would have pulled through. I wouldn't have, been, have abandoned God. If you look at the old kings, I would have been the one who didn't take God for granted. And in time, this switch happens. And as I begin having to face myself and my life and my mistakes and all my failures and come to terms with all these things, I started to realize in every story of scripture, in every single one, I'm the villain. Hurts, hurts saying that, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's the truth. It's the truth. In every single story, I am the villain. So, all right, here we go. So then you went into, uh, if you ignore the entreaties at your church when you express questions, you just need more faith and get a hold of scholarly work into the history, the linguistics, the textual and literary criticisms. When you even just read it, you can't simply gloss over the commanded genocides, the taking of virgin girls into sex and Chattel slavery, I don't even know what that word is. Chattel, chattel, chattel slavery. The ordering of one people to ritually mutilate their newborn boys' penises. Really? Oh my gosh. Any other guys out there? Like, if you read that, like kind of roll your eyes on that comment. You're like, really? You want what? what as opposed to what? We should have a world of turtleneck penises. You know what I mean? So anyways, all right. So was that immature? Welcome to the channel, y'all. Once again, I'm Mission Mike, worst missionary of all time. All right, so what it says is, look at what you're talking about though. Like, I, I get what you did. That's exactly what I was talking about in the video. Too much stuff beside scripture. You're over here trying to look into scholarly work, into the history of it. You're trying to look into like linguistics. It, you're going outside of scripture. Let me, for those of you who haven't read the Bible, I'm gonna give you a little tip. And Jenna, when you return, when you've turned and you return to it, just like Peter had to, when you pick up the Bible, here's what you do, y'all. You pray to God and you say, this, this is what I did, or at least this is what worked for me. I'm sure there's other ways about it, but I was just like, God, if, <clears throat> if this is truth, will you confirm it? Will you, will you reveal that? And if this isn't, take me to whatever is. You're not supposed to test God, but I think new to the faith people, I think people, I think everybody gets one at the start where you can say to the Lord, Lord, if you're real, can you show me? You know, if you're real, I need to know. Like, I, I, I'm asking you to like, help me to have faith, okay? And and that's where your faith gets birthed out of. But you gotta like sit there and you, you have to like, ask the Lord to confirm this stuff. But if you start trying to decide if scripture's real or not outside of scripture or outside of all these other sources, yeah, you're gonna, there's a website that's whythebibleswrong.com. I'm sure there's one like that. <clears throat> you can go to and you start reading out of that, of course it's gonna mess with your perception. You gotta read it, you gotta try living it out, and then you can come up with a conclusion. And I know you're trying to merit to yourself 
that you think you gave this a fair shot. But I, I know, I see better. Like, I see through that. I, I know otherwise. How's the phrase? I see better. I know otherwise. Something like that. Anyways, I gotta get a little coffee in. Mm. This was good calm, and I appreciate the passion. Um, from one passionate person to another, I can at least appreciate that, even though you're wrong about everything. All right. Um, all the other stuff that you talk about. Um, you read that bit about the Levite who took a wife who ended up thrown into a mob, serially raped, and left for dead at the door. Spoiler alert, she did die. She wasn't just left for dead, she did die. You learn how Christianity rampaged against Northern European pagans, burning down their villages, forced converting them at sword point, all so they could send them a tithe bill. Okay, see that, there you go. There's an example of like, you're reading something outside of it or you didn't properly read it. They never, according to the Bible, did they conquer nations to collect a tithe bill. That was never, ever, ever a motivation for any wars that went down in scripture, period. The only, but you know what? Like you, what you named here, it's not even close to as bad as it gets. How about the promised land? Everyone, you know, some people heard that term, the promised land, right? This beautiful land that the Lord promised. Like, let's be real. Do, do y'all, anyone who's read it, some of you readers out there, you know what happened on that one? God told him to go annihilate all the people in this land and then steal their land from them. You know, I, here's what I'd have to say to you, Jenna. What did you think it was gonna say? Like, when you're gonna pick that Bible up, what did you think you were gonna read? This past full of sunshine and rainbows and where all the characters in scripture did good and they succeeded and, it's, and it just is uplifting? No, you read about, see, the stories you're naming is how you know it's true because we, see some of the nastiest examples of humanity. That's how you know it's true. I mean, it, we're already getting there to this day. Like, I mean, God annihilated his own people. He sent, for example, the, the Babylonian empire to kill tons of his people. And Jesus was with them at the time. So Jesus approved genocides and wars and the slaughtering of his own people. Okay, this is Jesus, all right? and. But back then they were sacrificing their own children to these foreign gods. We're doing it today. Like that's, it's completely everything. Yeah, you're gonna talk about a town full of gay guys, queers, whatever the term is, wanting to kick down the door and rape some guy to death. And then and then some, the, the father, whatever, hands out one. It's a, yes, 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 that absolutely happened back then. Like, be, you know why? Because we're on the direction of it happening again, okay? Maybe it's a more apocalyptic future. Maybe it's, uh, who knows, but it's like, it's already manifesting now. That's part of the reason why I made the video. It's like, you got freaking, how many abortions have gone down? Do you know what you do that to? It's the same thing as the idolatry back then. You had people who probably didn't want their kids. They wanted to live their lives. They, wanted, they didn't want the responsibility. And then in the name of, making the right choice, uh, just like we're doing now, it's happening again to this day. It's like, yeah, so all this stuff happened. But again, as I'm hearing you quoting it, <clears throat> you're, so what though? Does that nullify the existence of God? You know, and to y those of y'all who are listening, here's a little tip, like, I once was talking to some unbelievers and stuff and, and I was like, okay, what would it take for you to believe in God? And People, there's a difference between having faith in God and knowing he exists, okay? So it's like, Jenna, I would, I would imagine if God opened up the sky and he was like, here I am, I'm real. And now you couldn't deny it. But then he told you, okay, I want you to go kill a hundred people. Would you do it? That's the point I'm making. It's like, you wouldn't. You'd be like, yeah, I know you're real, but I'm still not submitting. So it's like, you're trying to nullify things by the content within there because you think it's heavy or it was hard to, but I mean, it's just, what did you think you were gonna read? And welcome to humanity and God destroyed us once via flood. And then at the worst pinnacles of humanity, he then offered salvation. It's like, praise Jesus, it's the good news. But you know what I also learned is from doing years of mission work, the more you hear the dark stories and the things people have done or have had done to them, the more you begin to realize why God would annihilate the earth. And so yeah, anyways, okay. Uh, and the reasons why Christians don't read it, they don't have to. You tell them it's grace, grace, nothing but the grace. You don't have to do one thing, come on down. They get there two and 20, 
Is that an expression or something like that? Two verses, 20 minutes of somebody's opinion about them every week. You get exactly what you wanted. People who never once actually thought through a worldview, but instead responded to a sales pitch. Okay, th but that's also why I made the video. See, we agree on that one. I don't think you can be a sheep. I don't think you should go into a church, take a sales pitch and not think for yourself. And I can biblically prove that as well. Jacob, who would be renamed Israel, the father of all of us, like or the believers, was blessed by God because he wrestled with him all night. I have met countless people who I would pray over and they weren't Christian or they didn't know what to believe, but I respected that they were on a journey. I respect that you're on a journey because to those people, when they find faith, it'll be real. It'll be founded on conviction and belief, not just going into a church echo chamber and repeating what you hear. Christianity should not be you parroting what you hear. It has to be a real true conviction. Otherwise, then it's what you have is not faith. So I actually agree with you on that one. Okay, but honestly, Bub, fan of X-Men much? Your attitude is extremely off-putting. You know how many people would say that? Get in line, all right? And so typical of Christians. Oh, and you know what? Your attitude is so typical of non-believers. That's all you are the fastest people on earth to slap us in the face. Cause most of you know, we got to turn the other cheek. But guess what? Mission Mike is the worst Christian slash missionary of all time. I'll slap you right back. Okay. I think your attitude is off putting and you're trying to project yourself on me. So what do you think about that? Hmm. Okay. You say you're a missions person, but your disdain for what you would term sinners and their beliefs is stunning, really. How did you conclude at any point I disliked sinners? I freaking, let me tell you something. I have equal disdain for everyone, okay? I'm fair. And not to mention, I would also say, when I traveled and did mission work, I liked unbelievers way more than Christians because like if I, like I, when I performed out and, and did stuff out at like Santa Monica and go do mission work out there, um, golly, it's like I had more fun and better conversations and more uplifting conversations with unbelievers versus I got a lot of these, there's like this religiously correct group of people who would come up and just tell me everything I'm doing wrong and what they didn't like. And I started getting sick and tired of them. Like I'd have people try to stop and be like, well, I don't like that you, you do this or I don't like your look or I don't like your image and I would just be like hey you see that spot like a hundred feet down the pier um why don't you go over there and do it better then you know don't don't like there'd be thousands of people walking by and I'd be like look at all these people I was reading scripture up till you came up to me and told me how I need to do things better so why don't you then go do it better okay worst missionary of all time okay go do it better I don't freaking care but don't don't interrupt me like in the middle of my work and so anyways all right um Sinners and their beliefs is stunning, really. How do you not raise every lost person's BS meter instantly? Okay. Jenna, <clears throat> I'm, I'm just gonna say this again. I just, I know that this convicted you. I know that I was talking about you. I don't fault you for the struggles you've had in life. I don't know anything about you, but I can already guess stuff. This is, this is the, and for those of y'all listening, this is hopefully a learning experience as you watch these interactions and you learn who you're facing and how to handle things. And probably don't even take my advice because I because I, I, I operate in tough love, you know? That's just how I am. You know, I'm sure there's somebody else who would have made this video and it would have been very different. It would have been much sweeter, more loving. But, you know, <clears throat> Jenna, pick your Bible back up. Pick your faith back up and don't quit on it. I. I'll bet a thousand dollars it's like you probably you're not married your relationships failed your life failed everything going on and it failed and maybe somebody tried to sell you on that all your problems would go away if you just accepted Jesus but then if you read scripture it tells you the complete opposite it says your life's gonna get way worse if you accept him it's you're basically forfeiting a, a good life now for a, a better afterlife you know which is the biggest gamble any human could ever make so you know I don't fault you for like failing and stuff and it's like believe me like I'm still this day failing I'm you know, the last, per even I'm st shocked that I got saved. You know, I'm the last person on earth who should be saved. So at the same time, it's like, I think the video convicted you. I think it spoke to you. I think you're struggling and you're in a lot of pain right now, but I don't fault you, you know, because it's like dad gum. It's like, man, I, I still have my hard times. And I know before I got saved, it's like, oh, life was like brutal. There was no joy in anything. And you know, 
I would sell Christian. I'm, I wouldn't even try to sell you Christianity. I'd just speak from my own testimony, and that's this. It's like scripture didn't take all my problems away. It didn't. It made my life worse, if I'm being honest. But you know, the biggest thing I would sit there and say is, it's like those darkest moments and those darkest times in your life. It gave me the strength to pull through. So it may not take your problems away, but it helps you to power through it. It gives you the power you need to like overcome it, you know? And I guess I would just once, once again, like reiterate, you know, it's like, why, why would you give up? It's like, that's my biggest question for you. Why'd you give up? You know, that's who you are. You gave up, you're a quitter. Don't be a quitter. Don't. And I know that you probably sit there and got a, research and look up online how to save your soul or like how Christians are wrong and you you put you got to put just as much time and faith into convincing yourself Christianity isn't real and God's not real because that little voice that that gnaws and eats at you when you're quiet and still of like what if he is real and what if you're going to hell and let me tell you something right now that you already know if you're not saved any person who's not saved yeah you're going to hell like that's but the good news, the gospel, is that while we were sinners, think of those moments where you failed the most and where you're committing the worst acts of your life. That's when Jesus died for you. It was in that moment. So don't, yeah, don't be a quitter. It's like, you know, I, I remember I used to play like athletics when I was a kid. And I remember there were guys who wanted, who went in there because they wanted all the beauty that it had to offer and the growth and the maturity that it will give you and the fellowship and the, the, feeling of, of self-reward from overcoming it. But they quit because everybody wants to wanted to be a star, but nobody wanted to put the work in, you know? It's like maybe you're putting the work in and, and maybe you read it and maybe it hurt you and, and maybe you got exhausted and quit and threw in the towel. But I'm just saying like, get back up, Jenna. And if you got this much passion, God knows we could use you on our team once again, you know? So it's like, don't, I feel you. I've been beaten down. I've, I've had life kick the crap out of me. That's all life's ever been doing, you know, but at the same time, it's like, don't, what makes a person strong isn't their ability to win as much as their ability to not quit. You know, that makes the strongest, most thorough competitors of all are just people who don't give up and don't throw in the towel. So Jenna, pick up your Bible. Okay. You're one of the statistics. You're one of the people I described in the video. Shame on you. Um, but I do love you, Jenna. Like, I, I really do. And tell you what, for you, I would even give some of my time. So, all right, y'all go ahead and conclude all this. Um, Jenna, go to missionmike.com. Shoot me a message. Send me your number. I will actually give you some of my time. That The rest of you, like, no, sorry. I don't give my time to anybody. I give my time to usually unbelievers. If you're already saved, you have a whole network and community of believers you can talk to. It's the unbelievers. Y'all are my favorite. But anyways, um... Freaking love you. I'm rooting for you, Jenna. Like I am. I know it's slapped you around a little bit. You did it first. We're, we're even. But I, I'm rooting for you. I'm praying for you. And I'm going to pray for you real quick. And I would ask anybody and everyone to join in. And don't worry, I won't preach to you in this prayer. But here we go. God, I just want to pray for Jenna right now. Uh, I just speak a blessing over her life. A hedge of protection. I pray that just whatever she touches would just thrive, it would succeed. Uh, there would be a blessing that flows out of her hand. I pray a hedge of protection around her so that any hardships of this life, um, anything that comes her way, you know, just shield her from it, you know, and may she just be showered and just your blessings and your love. And I pray this in the name of Yeshua, amen. So there you go, Jenna. Uh, but anyways, so y'all, and once again, for those of you on the outside looking in, um, read your Bible. That was the point of the last video. You know, and when you don't, you end up like Jenna. Oh, sorry, Jenna. I just can't help myself. All right. I freaking love you, though. Uh, but anyways, love you guys. Go to missionmike.com if you want to support this thing. Now, I'm a full-time missionary, y'all. I don't freaking make a cent for any of this. I'm doing this out of love in my heart. And it's caused me to have to live uh, in a van for many years. <laughs> so if you want to support the mission, uh, any tithes, donations are literally solely the only thing that keeps this thing going. So missionmike.com. And if you need prayer support, reach out to your boy. Uh, but do me a favor, read your Bibles. All right, remember y'all, we got to save the world. So answer your mission. Let's answer the call. Love you guys. And I'll talk to y'all soon.